It's been nine seasons, y'all. All right, we've had nine seasons trying to learn a proper team comp, and we still haven't learned it. It's okay, because Papa Whack is here to help you out. No, I'm totally kidding. So, more than likely, you probably know how to make a quote-unquote proper team comp, or, oh, you totally know the meta, and you totally know what heroes are supposed to be played. That's perfectly fine, but today, yes, I will be talking about the quote-unquote perfect team comp, but not talking really about heroes, mainly just about the roles that you need to make in a team comp. Explain it, especially because I feel like people will tell you what is needed to be played, but don't really explain why it's needed to be played. So that's a big portion of this video that I want you to emphasize. And also to show you guys that there's many different team comps that you can try to work with, and not all is lost if someone picks a Widow. Not all is lost if someone picks a Sombra, especially in Season 9. And I will be explaining why not everything is lost, but of course I still want to talk about like the bare bones of a proper, quote unquote, proper team comp, and just kind of how it works. But this video is also supposed to show you what you can do when adding to the team comp and I get it you know there's the 5 DPS meta and there's the Torb Widow Hanzo meta and there's the, there's just a bunch of stupid team comps that clearly if you add on to it it's not gonna make a big difference but it just takes one person to make the change and you're that person that's gonna make the change and if you're just able just to see okay well bro you said this in this video we need this hero if you add on to what the team needs and just kind of support maybe that with Widow and Hanzo even though it is probably a stupid comp then it's only gonna just bleed to more success rather than just you flaming everyone you getting mad and then picking Torby you know what I'm saying so again I just want to explain everything and just show you how you can make the difference by filling in that spot so finally get into the video for my long-winded intro there's different roles or different categories as some people will call it when making a team comp and those categories if you just want to look at it from a bare-bones perspective is a DPS slot a tank slot and a support slot those are like the three main roles when looking at just from a basic version like a white girl going to Starbucks so the first category you're gonna be looking at is gonna be the DPS slot and don't even worry about this because it's probably first picked and you probably won't be able to pick it going on <laughs> no I'm totally kidding so covering the DPS category this is a unique one because at least for me there's so many ways they can go about it but really it just ties into any category really just ties into the the, the players like skills what they're best with who they're unique with but really especially a DPS category because the main job as the title applies is DPS damage per second you just have to off put damage but I wish they would kind of re rename it to EPS eliminations per second because a drunk rat can just constantly just fire grenades into a Ryan shield and he's doing his job damage per second but really the main job as the DPS it's so simple I sound stupid is to just get kills yes people will make jokes saying that soldier center six is the main healer of the team he's gonna be healing and probably in season nine that will be the case because no one wants to play healer all jokes aside though really what i'm trying to say here is that the dps slot can really be flexible and you just need one main killer you just you, it, if you somehow magically go into season nine and nobody fills that main dps slot it could really just be about any dps hero and i might sound arrogant when saying that there might be a science behind it but just a, as a basic concept Really, if you're able to get kills as a Doomfist, as a Soldier, or a Genji, no one's going to be arguing with you because you're fulfilling your role. And again, this video isn't supposed to tell you which hero to play. Really, just explain the roles behind it. But if you just want to, like, a consistent basis of what is required from the DPS role, what's the best way to just get the most out of that role, the first thing I can tell you is just have a great ultimate that has a lot of killing potential. An example I'm going to throw up there is the best DPS hero, at least in my opinion, which is going to be Genji. Genji has so much DPS potential because not only does he have a great ultimate that just has tons of range that can get a lot of heroes and can't easily be stopped. Like, of course, there's some obvious things like a McCree flashbang, a Roadhog hook, and whatnot. Uh, but he also has great DPS potential to the point where he could be at close range, he can be from far away, ideally up close and personal. That's where you want to have Genji. But there's just so much that you can get out from Genji from any situation. Again, it just all kind of depends on that Genji player but of course everyone's a Genji player so they're all gods <laughs> but now we're gonna get into the tank category because I feel like this is a section that even I had trouble understanding at first because I thought oh you just need two beefy tanks and you'll be fine not like ugh, I don't want to say not necessarily but not necessarily because really when you're making a team comp around tanks or just adding tanks to a team comp there's two different categories kind of three actually but two main categories which is gonna be a main tank and also an off 
tank. The best way I can just differentiate the jobs between the two tanks is that the main tank's main job, you, you, you see what, that was a patch, <laughs> I'm sorry, the main tank's main job is not really to be getting kills, not really out there trying to be a, a montage maker and just getting all these six man team wipes, no, their main job is to be protecting the team, they're the anchor tank, so you ever like play tag with like a bunch of girls on the field, not, not me, because no girls ever tagged me at recess, but, <laughs> but usually during that tag session, there's always like a safe zone, a protection spot, maybe it was the swing set, maybe it was the actual school or water fountain, whatever, Ever, that's the way that I see the main tank. You're the water fountain in this game of tag. So you get what I'm trying to get here. You're picking up what I put in down. Usually the main tank is going to be an anchor tank, which is normally Reinhardt, which is normally Arissa, someone that they can rely on protection for, and that, hey, they're kind of a, a, kind of like a meat shield in a sense. Again, I'm not trying to get into so much details about, oh, this role requires this, this, and that. Pretty much, you're just the protection hub. You're not going to be getting kills, and sometimes even you're the main setup, like ultimate, like usually Reinhardt's ultimate is paired up with a, a Bastion, a Pharah, a Soldier, same thing with the Rissa. so that's the best way that you can just look at picking a main tank. Hey, am I going to be getting kills, or am I going to be protecting the team and just helping push forward? Well, if you chose the latter, more than likely you're going to pick an Arissa or a Reinhardt. And honestly, a lot of people think the tank category is very boring. No! The main tank role is boring, I will admit. It is very boring, that's why I don't like playing it. But it's very much needed. But, now we're getting into the off-tank category, where this is the same tank hero, big, beefy, and bulky, but their main job is to be getting kills. Their main job is to be going and just focusing someone, you know, pulling someone, or just diving onto someone. And this could be classified, as terms of the hero, as like a Roadhog or a D.Va. Someone that's not there really to protect the team, like, yes, D.Va has defense matrix that's mainly there to like negate a bunch of damage coming to you but really they have so much dps potential that's just uncanny and just unheard of and they're big and bulky so that's their main like that's their main niche that makes them so special and why they're the off meta tank or just not the off tank not off meta tank uh because again they're not there to protect the team since they have so much potential that they can get from just killing someone but the third category because you might have seen that i've kind of left out someone like a zarya or a winston this is like a gray area of the tank category. Sure, they're tanks, sure they have DPS potential, but they can also protect the team, which is where I'm calling them flex tanks. Someone that isn't really tied to just one job. Reinhardt, their main job, protect the team. Like, no doubt about it. Yes, they have a hammer they can swing, and that's going to come out eventually, but that's not what they're really there for. That's not their main job. Someone like Winston, he has his bubble, which can protect a lot of people, but he also has slight DPS potential, but not a lot. See, you get what I'm trying to say here. Same thing with Zarya protection with her bubble kind of some dps if she gets her charge but not really there off the get-go so this is where i kind of just nicknamed them the the flex tanks or someone that's very flexible so some people argue oh yeah winston's a main tank which is very true but he can also be seen as an off tank it just kind of all depends on what's already made if there's already reinhardt on the field you as winston you're going to be the main off tank you're going to be the main tank that's going in and getting kills diving their back lines and really you just need two tanks really to fulfill Fill the, the tank category role in a team comp. But now we're going into the role, which is, I feel like, the most important role. If you don't have this, everything's going to crumble, which is the support role. So, really, again, you just need two support heroes. And I feel like this is like a category that most people kind of already know. So, I don't really need to go in depth and detail and explain everything. But really, you just need two healers, which is going to be a main healer and a secondary healer. So, the main healer, you guys probably already know this, it's going to be a Mercy, an Ana, or a Mora. Their main job is to just off put a lot of heals. Their main job is just to heal everybody up. Yes, they can get kills, especially with Mora and Ana. Mercy, not so much. But just think of that, like, if the team is dying, if the team is crumbling, and you had an opportunity to heal them, everyone's gonna be looking at you. I'm, I'm sorry, yes, I'm not even gonna be saying that they're gonna be blaming you, but really, you need to look at it from that standpoint. Everyone's looking to you for support. Yes, they shouldn't be playing recklessly. Yes, they shouldn't be, uh, like, overextending whatnot, but really, they're looking to you for support if they are playing smart. Now, the secondary healer spot is something that a lot of people kind of overlook because they only look at the secondary healer role as a healer point, as someone that's only there for heals. This is someone like a Zenyatta, 
a Lucio, uh, uh, who uh, even Brigida, if I want to try to make this so that this is present. <laughs> These heroes specialize, yes, they're a healer, but they have secondary abilities that are just supposed to be utilized properly. What I mean by that is what they bring to the table is supposed to enhance the whole entire team. Zenyatta, it gives them orbs so mobile heroes can be mobile, and it also gives the enemy team discord orbs so that you can just get more damage. Lucio enhances the team by speed boosting them. Brigida, it, like, I'm still figuring it out, but it just gives it mobile heals so that it's very fast, it's quick, it's there, and it also gives them armor on top of that. So their abilities is what is supposed to be specialized and utilized to enhance the team to try to just win the game. Yes, they're there for heals, but that's not their only job, and it's supposed to be a fine balance, whereas with the primary healer role, it's mainly there just to get heals. And that about wraps it up. One DPS hero, two tanks, and two healers to make up the perfect team comp. Oh, oh wait, bro you whack. That only makes up five heroes. What about the sixth spot? It takes six people to make up a team comp. And that's why I'm nicknaming the last and final spot the wild card spot, the flexible spot. Whatever you want to nickname it, I'm just nicknaming the wild card spot because really you can just do whatever with this spot. Commonly, usually, most of the time, about 80% of the time, you're going to pick another DPS hero. Now, this isn't just an offense hero. This could literally be anybody that still has killing potential. A Widow, a Sombra, a Torbjorn, dare I say, a freaking Hanzo, this could be anybody, and this is why I love the wildcard spot, because it just throws the enemy team a curveball that they don't know how to deal with. Remember the Bastion meta? That was a wildcard hero. That was a wildcard spot that it filled the DPS spot, and most people didn't know how to take him out. Same thing here. If there's a specialized hero, or, or a specialized player rather, that knows a hero that really is a meta, don't flame them if there's room for an off-meta wildcard hero, because, again, if they know what they're doing, if they know how to work Sombra, know how to work mayor or just work all these other heroes you're going to be able to succeed it's the biggest risk for the biggest reward you just have to have faith and luckily with overwatch unlike pokemon you're able to swap out heroes you can't swap out pokemon off your team you can swap them inside your team but luckily you're able to swap out or the spot could even be a third tank to just utilize the word tank meta really this main spot is supposed to enhance your guys strength that's on your team and capitalize the weaknesses on the enemy team let's say you guys do have a Moira, you're probably going to pick another tank so that she can have more heals. Or let's say on the enemy team, they have three or four tanks and you're playing a soldier. You're probably going to play a Reaper to capitalize on their weaknesses. Or maybe you're going to play a Sombra to hack all the health packs because the enemy team has a Tracer that's utilizing the health packs. There's just so much that can go into this wildcard spot that I can't just explain in an already almost 13 minute video. But I just want to show you guys that not all is lost and sometimes the enemy team won't we'll know how to deal with the Widow, won't we'll know how to deal with that Hanzo, with that Mei, or with that Torbjorn. There's just so much that can go into the spot that can make it the team comp, the perfect team comp, still very flexible. That's what I love about Overwatch, is that it's not tied to just one single hero in one single slot, it can just be all over the place. But really, the perfect team comp, I just want to, it doesn't even have to be five spots, it just has to be three slots that you have to fill. A healer, a main healer, a tank, it could even be an off tank and a DPS hero. You just need those three spots. If you want to double down on those three spots, then again, you get six heroes and boom, there you go. Go have fun, kids. Or it could be two tanks, three DPS heroes, and one healer. Ideally not, but again, if you just have that idea of the perfect team comp in your head and you're looking at, okay, what can I fill as a player? you're going to be succeeding because not only are you working with the team, but you're just helping the team just have a better chance at winning. Again, this perfect team comp was just to show you guys the options that you have when picking roles, not picking heroes, picking roles. And I think I did a pretty decent job at that. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this video and hopefully this video does help you out. I love you guys. More Overwatch videos to come and bye.